Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and in this upcycling video I would love to share with you how to take a men's shirt that's a little bit bigger than your own size and then transform it into a fitted shirt for you. So I just wanted to let you know that it probably isn't going to be the quickest upcycle out there, but it is pretty simple and straightforward. It just requires a little bit of thought and a little bit of process because there are a lot of moving parts when it comes to a shirt. So of course, I'll guide you step by step. I'll explain the logics behind what I do and what decisions that I make. So we can take this and turn into something like this. Now that you can see the final result, we have the goal in mind and the direction that we need to move. So let's get started. When starting any upcycles, first I try to understand the garment that I'm going to be working with because that is going to set up the whole scene, how little or how many adjustments I'm going to need to do and also the difficulty of these adjustments, which in return will give you a very clear idea of what is waiting for you ahead. As you can see, the sleeves are quite long and wide, so the cuff is definitely going to need some work. Then of course I have some extra width and extra length in the body. But the most important part that I was paying attention to is the fit of the neckline and the collar itself, because that is quite a difficult part to construct in a shirt, so the fact that it fits means that I don't have to finagle around with it at all. Now if yours doesn't fit, of course, you can cut it off completely and do some other really fun and interesting neckline but in my case this is great we're gonna leave it as is before doing any markings or anything else I'm going to start by unpicking the bust pocket and both of the sleeves now when it comes to the bust pocket you don't necessarily have to unpick it but in my case it does sit a little awkwardly right now on my body now when you do unpick the pocket be aware that it presents another challenge because most of the times you can clearly see the stitching line once the pocket is off now in my previous upcycles i'm sure you have seen me use two techniques when it comes to undoing the seams one of course is just using scissors and cutting it all apart and the other one is what I'm doing here, which is unpicking the stitching. Now each one of them has benefits. The first one is great if you have a shirt or any other garment that's way bigger and cutting does save a little bit of time. But if you're working with a garment that's just a little bit bigger than your size, unpicking the seams really helps because then you have the seam allowance, which means that you have a little bit of extra fabric to work with. All right, so the pocket is off. So are both of the sleeves. Now I'm going to take the body and I'm going to put it on myself so that way I can mark those first adjustments. Now here's a quick tip for this next step. If you're wearing a shirt or a garment where you like the placement of the shoulder, this is going to be a great help. However, try to not to wear anything that's super thick or super bulky. Let's say for example, a really puffy sweater because it is such a big garment it might sway some of the other measurements of the project that you're working on. I'm going to put this on myself and first I'm going to make sure that it sits nice and neat and not all bunched up. And this is what we have so far. Then with my fingers I'm going to try to feel the seam of the sleeve of the garment that I'm wearing underneath. And then with a piece of chalk I'm going to mark that on a purple shirt. Next I'm going to pinch in the side seam. Now this doesn't have to be even at all. All I need is that approximate marker that aha uh -huh, this is by how much I need to take in the side seam so that way the shirt fits the way I want it to. Now I'm going to be doing this on one side only but if you're not sure repeat the same process on the other side seam. Just remember both side seams have to be taken in the same amount. Here I've decided that it's going to be a little bit easier to see if I actually let the side seam out. So that's what I did next. After that, let's go ahead and mark the new side seam. Now a quick tip for those who have patterns and who sew from scratch. If you do have a button-up shirt pattern or let's say other button-up blouse or doesn't necessarily even have to be a button a blouse. So if you have a pattern that you've made before that you know fits really well, then you can surely use those pattern pieces in order to transform this shirt. That will definitely take a lot of the guesswork out of this process. I placed my garment nice and flat on the table and then simply took my measuring tape and measured the distance between the original side seam and the pin that I have placed earlier. Then I took that measurement and I copied it on the opposite side seam. Now keep in mind that these measurements might be different depending on where exactly you are placing them. So for example, you might take in two inches around the bust, but only one inch around the hip area, which is a little bit lower down the side seam. 
Next, I pinned both of the side seams according to these measurements and put the garment back on me. And here I've decided that, you know what, I want a little bit of room around my hips. So I made necessary adjustments. I took the shirt off and here you see the adjusted side seam. Let me show you. This was the side seam that we marked before and the pins are marking the new side seam. Right now we're going to be working with one side only and all of the adjustments that we're going to do on one side we will then copy on the other side. So now let's go ahead and talk about the armhole. I'm going to take a piece of drafting paper and I'm going to unpin couple of pins here at the top so that way I can go ahead and slide it in. First though I want to make sure that I fold it in like so to adjust for the shoulder slope. Now that that is in I can go ahead and take my water soluble marker, in your case that could be a pencil, and go ahead and trace the outline of the armhole as it currently is. Once done also mark the position of the new side seam. Let's go ahead and take it out. Now we need to measure from the edge of the shoulder all the way to where we made our first marking. So in this case, it's about an inch and a half. So I'm going to place my measuring tape right over here at an inch and a half and make a mark. Then I'm going to make sure to draw in the original side seam, which is in this case straight, and the new side seam, which starts off straight and then of course curves. But at this very point, both of these are parallel. Now I'm going to take my ruler and I will place it at this marking. I want to place it in a way that is going to be parallel to the center front, so to the button placket, because usually that's straight. Or in this case, it is also going to be parallel to the side seam. So I've placed it like so. And then I want to take another ruler, but you can also do it in two or three steps. You don't have to have two rulers. And place it like so. So that way it goes through the marking of the new side seam. As you can see, we have created a right angle. So we can go ahead and outline that in pencil first. Now from this corner at the 45 degree angle, let's go ahead and take about three quarters of an inch and make a marking. Now that is very, very approximate, but this will do in this case. You can always take less or more. And then also very approximately, let's go ahead and measure this line that we just made and divide it in half. From this mark, we can take, let's say, about half an inch in this case. It's not a super fitted shirt because we're upcycling, so let's do half an inch. And you can always play around with this measurement as well. So now we need to connect this point and this point, and you can do that with a sort of like a straight line, and then we're going to curve it in a little bit more. So we're connecting it first, and then we're going to connect this point and this point. And then this point and the new side seam. Now over here you can see that it doesn't end up straight, it is a little bit curved. So let's go ahead and repeat the same. And our goal is to make sure that the armhole is nice and smooth. So if at one point you need to take it a little bit away from the given measurements that we have taken, absolutely do that. Now I'm going to cut away paper along this new line. Bring in the shirt. I'm going to make sure that I align this old line with the old armhole. If you go with your finger like this, you can feel the edge of the fabric. Here I've miscalculated the position of the shoulder a little bit, but it's all right. We can finagle that here in a little bit. So now that I have placed it on top of my shirt, I can go ahead and I can grab my marking tool and I can make the outline of the new armhole. And here where I have miscalculated this little part, I'm just going to bring in like this. There we go. And here's our new front armhole. As you can see from the original armholes, the front and the back are different. Now in my case, we're going to make the back just a little bit straighter of the line that we have here in the front. So first, I actually need to cut this, but because this line only represents the stitch line, I actually need to cut about 3 8 of an inch away from it, so that way I leave the space for seam allowance. As you can see, I have only cut through one layer, which is the front of the shirt. Now from here on the bottom, I'm going to take the same curve, and this time it's going to be with the seam allowance because that's what we're outlining. So very similar curve, same curve, right over here on the bottom. 
and then over here we're going to make it a little bit straighter so not as curved now at this point i think some of you might be asking well why didn't you just eyeball the new armhole because they kind of look a little bit similar and be done with that instead of doing all of these extra steps and i'm here to tell you that you can totally eyeball and you can totally do the way that you see fit for your particular project in my case from my personal experience i do like to take some extra steps at least in order to not to forget your seam allowances because when you are upcycling it is different than when you're sewing a garment from scratch so i've been in the situations when i have forgotten to add that seam allowance because you're just in the mix of so many moving parts over here so when i do this it reminds me that aha uh -huh, add your seam allowances speaking of which i add 3 8 of an inch but in your case if you want to do french seams or any other seams you might want to add a little bit more because of course the construction of the seam there is going to be different so in my case i like to have a little bit more context and a little bit more points of reference because not only we have to take care of the armhole we also have the sleeve to work with Plus, it might seem like I have quite a big garment over here, but I actually don't really have much fabric to work with in case if I make a mistake. This is a shirt size M. This is actually my husband's dress shirt, and I usually wear size S or M. So yes, there is quite a bit of width that I took out of the side seam, but there's not a ton of fabric to work with. And I just wanted to give you my perspective. And as always, take from these videos what works for you and figure out the rest. From here, I'm also going to cut the side seams. Again, we need to cut a little bit away from the original marking so that way we allow for the seam allowances. Now let's go ahead and pin the side seam completely. And what I want to check for is I want to place my armhole opened up and I want to make sure that there's no bumps and lumps over here and then the entire line is nice and smooth and as you can see right over here we got to tidy it up a little bit there we go you want to make sure that this area is nice and smooth as well so this is the side that hasn't been cut just yet and I'm going to place it over the side that we have already altered and we're going to find the center front and we're going to find a center back. In this case, I'm using a shoulder seam and of course the bottom of the yoke seam as a marker for myself to align to make sure that I'm on the right track. After I have adjusted all of the sides, the front and the back of the shirt, once again, I'm going to pin the side seams and put the garment on myself. Now you don't have to do that, but I just wanted to demonstrate what do we have before we move on to the next step. If you're happy with your side seam, now is the time to sew it all together. I'm going to be doing that with a straight stitch from the top all the way to the bottom. And after that, I'm going to finish it with a serger. Now don't worry if you don't have a serger. Use a tightly spaced zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or an overcast stitch if you have one. When sewing, of course, don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And once I'm done with both the straight stitch and the serger, I'm going to give the seam a really good press. Now when doing that, don't forget to check the fiber content of your garment because some fabrics don't take heat very well so be mindful of that now before we do move on to the sleeves which is one of the last and final steps let's talk very quickly about a bust dart there are multiple ways how you can form a bust dart and even add it to a garment one of my favorite ways is to do it from the front armhole this is actually how i draft a bodice block with a dart now if I put this garment right now as it is on myself you will see that there's a little bit of excess right over here so if you pinch it almost all the way up to the, your bust apex that will be your dart the bigger the bust the bigger is going to be the dart now that dart isn't usually left in the front armhole instead it is rotated into the side seam or in some other areas in a garment depending on what is the design and a lot of different other things so in my case because i do have a small bust and i can get away without a bust dart and even if you have a large bust you can get away without a bust dart as well but the larger is the bust the more excess fabric you're going to have in this area so in my case i'm going to skip adding a bust dart but if you would like to add the bust dart i do have the tutorial on how to do that and how to rotate that then into a side seam 
and do that before you cut off the extra fabric from the side seam because you will need that extra in order to be able to form that dart. As for the sleeves, I think I have three options that I can play around with and I want to share all three of them with you so that way you can see what's possible. So the first one and probably the simplest one would be to take a sleeve, determine the amount by which you need to shorten it and shorten it from here. So not from the cuff but shorten it from the top of the sleeve and leave the cuff as is. Now in my case the cuff is too wide but let's say you only wear your shirt um, all rolled up in the sleeve then this would really work because then you don't really have to do anything to the cuff. The second option would be nearly the same but it would require for you to take the entire cuff off and then you will need to decrease the width of the sleeve by making an extra little pleat over here and also rework the cuff so that way now it fits your wrist. That one is definitely more involved and if you've never made a cuff for a sleeve it might be a little bit challenging so definitely think about that. Now you can see that in option number one and in option number two, the width of the sleeve right over here around your bicep is quite wide and not everybody might like that. So in option number three, we will actually reduce a little bit of that width by bringing the sleeve all the way up. So now the cuff isn't going to be sitting at the wrist, but it's actually going to be sitting quite higher, making your sleeve a three quarter of a sleeve. This way I don't have to finagle with the cuff and the width of the sleeve of the bicep is a little bit smaller. Now of course another option is to decrease the width of the sleeve from the sleeve seam right over here. But in my case I don't want to touch that seam so I think I'm gonna go with the option number three. Let's start by taking the sleeve and folding it in such a way that this part divides the sleeve in half and on the other side we will have a seam. Usually that's what's going to happen. You might have a sleeve that's a little bit different but that's the essence. Now while I was trying all of these sleeve options out I have marked for myself that for the third option I would like the top of the sleeve to be right over here. So before this part would go over here but now I need to shorten the sleeve from the top so that way this part would go like so into the armhole. The thing about the armhole and the sleeve is that they always work together and one really depends on the other. To redraft the sleeve, first I'm going to measure the entire armhole. For that, take your garment and your measuring tape and very, very carefully measure the entire armhole on the seam line, so a little bit away from the seam allowance. Or you can also measure that little draft for the armhole that we did when we were reworking it. Here this armhole is almost 21 inches. Now on average the cap height this measurement right over here so if you place a straight line before the curve of the sleeve starts this measurement right over here on average equals one third of the entire length of the armhole. So let's say I have the full 21 inches then I would divide it by three and I would get seven. So from this point right over here where I want my new sleeve to start, I would measure down seven inches and make another marking. Now in my case, I'm going to take it a little bit smaller, let's say about six and a half inches. There we go. Now we have two things of the equation that we know. We know the width of the bicep because we can't really change it and we also know the cap height. So the width of the bicep right over here is seven and a half inches and I want to take a piece of drafting paper and we're going to reflect that on here. Place seven and a half inches in a straight line on one side and seven and a half inches continuing on the other side like this because we have two sides of the sleeve, this one and the other one. So seven and a half and seven and a half. Then we're going to take this cap height measurement and we're going to reflect that on here as well. So in this case it's six and a half inches. Now I want to connect these points and make a triangle. Then take these lines and divide it in half and then divide each side in half again. I'm going to repeat the same steps on the other side. Next I have marked the following. From this point towards the inside of the triangle I marked 3 eighths of an inch. I left this point as is. From this point up I took 3 quarters of an inch. From this point up I took 5 eighths of an inch. From this point up a quarter of an inch. 
and from this point down towards the inside of the triangle I took half an inch. Now I'm going to connect these points with a curved line in order to create a sleeve. And that's what I have as right now. This one is front and this one is back. Usually the front has a little bit more scoop right here. Now because the sleeve and the armhole work together, I actually have to measure both of them and compare. So let's go ahead and start with the front. I'm going to flip it this way. So first I'm going to measure this curve and then I'm going to compare it to this measurement up to here of the front armhole. For me, this curve of the front of the sleeve measures 10 inches and a quarter. The front armhole measures 9 inches and 3 quarters. Now let's do the same with the back armhole. I have a very similar story for the back of the sleeve. It measures 10 and a half inches, but the front and the back armhole are nearly identical at nine and three quarters of an inches. So the sleeve is bigger than the armhole, which is usually very normal because we have to have extra ease in order to ease in the sleeve. But over here, the shoulder seam isn't necessarily a true shoulder seam. It's slightly a drop shoulder, which usually calls for a shorter cap height. One of the ways that I can see we can go about it is to measure nine and three quarters inches on the one curve, make a mark, and do exactly the same on the other one and make a mark as well. Here are these markings. Then I'm going to cut this out. I have placed my sleeve on a straight line. I have marked one edge of the sleeve and the other one, and also the middle as well. So as you can see, I have cut it apart because now we're going to collapse it. I'm going to hold these parts with my fingers and I'm going to overlap the cap of the sleeve up until those markings that we made earlier meet. Now I can tape it together. Now the bottom of the sleeve needs to be straight, so I'm going to place my ruler like so and I'm going to repeat the straight line that's underneath the sleeve. This could be now cut away. Obviously now we have a little bit of an uneven spot right over here, so let's just go ahead and tidy this up. This is the front of the sleeve, so I want to use this part. I'm going to take it and I'm going to align the top with the top over here, like so, and trace it with a chalk. Next, I'll turn the sleeve and I'm going to repeat exactly the same with the back pattern piece. Before cutting out the sleeve, let's go ahead and mark the middle of the sleeve since our front and the back armhole are nearly identical. And when cutting, only cut one layer at a time and don't forget to add for seam allowances. And there's my sleeve and I'll repeat the same on the other one. Once that is done, now it is time to get the sleeve into the armhole, which is rather easy because we don't have any ease in this, so no extra steps. Right now, we're going to align this marking that we made a little bit earlier, which marks the center of the sleeve, with this marking right over here, which divides the front and the back armhole in half. Then I'm also going to align the side seam with the sleeve of the seam. From here, I'm going to pin everything else and it should match perfectly because we did double check. From here, I finished the sleeve the same way that I finished the side seam, first with a straight stitch and then with a serger. When it comes to the hem, I simply did a straight line first and you can leave it as that as well. But I wanted to curve the hem just like the original shirt. So I did the curve on one side first and then copied that curve to the other side. After that, I finished it with a narrow double fold hem. Step number one is to fold in your hem about a quarter of an inch in and do a straight stitch. After that, I often like to give it a little trim and a good press before step number two. Then simply fold it in one more time and do the final stitch. And here it is, all done and ready to wear. Now, let me share with you a couple of close-ups of the details so that way you can see a little bit better. And first, let's start with a 360, so that way you can see the front and the back of the finished shirt. Then let's take a look at the sleeves. And as you can tell, I haven't had a chance yet to wash the shirt after being done with it. So here are still some of the chalk markings. And speaking of washing, I truly, truly hope for a miracle that after a wash, some of the stitch lines from the previous placement of the pocket are going to soften up a little bit and are not going to be as visible as they are right now because the previous placement of the pocket was like this. 
quite awkward, right? So I actually don't really plan on putting the pocket back because I like it as is. But if the stitch lines are still as visible, I'll definitely need to figure something out how to deal with that. A really big bonus is that you can actually wear the sleeves two ways. You can either wear them rolled up like I did, or you can actually wear them cuffed. And when I was planning the length of the shirt, I wanted to make sure that I can wear it both ways, let out and also tucked in. And here's the before and after, so that way we can see all of the work that we have done. Now, you probably don't know, but I actually have an entire series on my channel of all sorts of different upcycles. So click right over here to see them, and I'm sure you're gonna get a ton of inspiration. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you learn something new, maybe a different perspective on upcycling a shirt. And until next time, happy, thoughtful sewing. Bye.